But yet my desire is to be a servant. Then I must be utterly and totally dependent upon my Father. And allow Him to provide for me. And Him to direct my paths. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are what? Ordered by the Lord. That's utter dependence upon God. Secondly, approval. Jesus was getting ready to be baptized Himself by John the Baptist. And the Bible says that a voice from heaven came down and said, Behold my Son, in whom I am well pleased. How many of you, when you're seeking to be what God has called you to be, seek the approval of your Father? You know, we, I'm always seeking the approval of my wife. Amen. She can attest to that. <laughs> I mean, I really do. But in doing that, how much more should I seek the approval of my Heavenly Father? To approve of the things that I do and that I say. And even more, the things that I think. But yet we are seeking the approval of men more than the approval of God. We've got to get over that and start seeking the approval of God and Him and Him alone. Because in receiving the approval of our Father, guess what men get? They get the benefit of that. See, what we have to realize is that when we seek the approval of God, and when God is well pleased with His son or with His daughter, that men benefit from that approval rating. But yet we want to, we want to pre please and prove and, and, and everyone else instead of pleasing our Heavenly Father first and foremost. Thirdly, a principle of true servanthood is modesty. You know, today there's so many places and people and ministries that just self-advertise. Right? And they've got books upon books upon books and videos upon videos upon videos. And they're a worldwide ministry. And wow, look at us. But see, true servanthood is modesty. Because you realize that no matter what, no matter where you are, no matter what you've got on, no matter what you look like or smell like at the time, you are a servant of the Most High God. And you don't need the approval of men. With modesty, you're, you're not arrogant. You're humble. You're quiet. And remember what the Word of God says, that when you do things in secret, that what's God's going to do? He's going to reward you openly. When you are rewarded openly as a servant of the Most High God, guess who benefits from that? Other people. Because God's name is glorified. And when God gets the glory, people get the benefit. Fourthly, empathy or sympathy. We must be sympathetic. We must be understanding. A true servant of God, Jesus was truly sympathetic to the needs of the people. He understood their needs. He understood what they needed. He was very understanding. And that was doing things that the world despises. You see, really, it all comes down to it. As a true servant of the Most High God, you will be despised. Why will you be despised? Because Jesus said that you'll be despised for my name's sake. You will be despised for my name's sake. They will hate you. They will revile you. They will even want to take your life. Why? Because they took his life. Fifthly, and I like this one. A true servant is an optimistic person. An optimistic person. You're undiscourageable. In other words, no matter what happens, no matter what's going down all around you, no matter what the situation looks like, you know that your God is going to prevail on your behalf. Right. You know that no matter what you go through, even if it means giving your life, that God will give you the strength and the grace to endure it. Right. But yet we want to plan and scheme. And we maybe get up in the morning and look outside and say, ah, it's cold again. Ah, it's raining. Ah, what's it matter? What's it matter whether the sun's out? You know, I always had a saying before, behind every cloud... When the, when, the, when the sky's all cloudy, do you realize the sun's still shining? Do you know that today? It doesn't matter how many thunderstorms and what's going on. If we're in a cloudy area, the sun's right behind the clouds. That's, right. That's optimism. And a true servant of the Most High God is an optimistic person. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's not saying that you don't have those times like, oh, oh man, it's tough. That's fine. That's cool. But generally speaking, a servant is optimistic because you know the outcome. Your heavenly Father is in charge of what's going on. Amen. And this must fit with just right in. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna end right here. Pastor Eric, you come up and and, and play. This must fit. Just this is how God works. Lastly, a principle of true servanthood is anointing. Is anointing. When Jesus was getting baptized, here was the Son, the Father spoke. What was representative of anointing? The dove. There was an anointing, a supernatural anointing from the Father in Jesus' life that allowed him to be a true servant. And you know, when Pastor was uh, did that right after worship, I just knew that this is what God had wanted for today. That there is a, a supernatural anointing that God wants to pour out in your life so that you may become a servant.